Hi, this is Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to be talking about speed, velocity, and acceleration. If you've ever seen Usain Bolt run from Jamaica, well, first of all, it's highly impressive, uh, but you have an understanding of how fast fast really is. Um, in physics, we deal with really just two of these. Uh, in other words, speed is a scalar quantity. And you've, and you've used speed your whole life. You say, my car can go 20 miles an hour, or my car can <laughs> go 200 miles an hour, and, and we're talking about speed. Um, it's a scalar quantity, and if you don't really know what a scalar quantity is, make sure you watch the video on that. But velocity and acceleration are vector quantities, and so they include not only how the magnitude, uh, but also the direction at which uh, uh, velocity or, or uh, position might be changing over time. Um, and so in this video, I'm going to show you how to do some simple problems with velocity and acceleration, kind of explain what it is. Um, but we'll get into a lot more detail when we look through position versus time and velocity versus time graphs eventually. Um, so let's get going. Before I get started, however, there is a little cheat that I want to remind you, uh, and that's because I live in the U.S., and since I live in the U.S., I really have a hard time dealing just in my brain with meters per second. And so if you do any problem in physics, you always have to use the units meters per second, but in the back of my head I have this. In other words, if I say something's going 10 meters per second, in the back of my brain I have to think, oh, that's about 22 miles an hour. Because that gives me an idea of really how fast something is going. So if you want to use that in the back of your head, you can. But don't use it in your equations or you're going to get the wrong answer. Now, velocity is a vector. And what does that mean? When you're ever talking about velocity, you have to say not only, uh, let's say, 2.6 meters per second, but you have to give me the direction that that's moving in. So it could be north, or it could be west, or it could be up, or it could be down. And so if you ever give a velocity, make sure you have the direction. Now you're going to find immediately in this video that I quit talking about direction. And so you may think, mm, he just told me direction's important, but now he doesn't even use direction. And the reason why is that we generally use a coordinate system like this. And so if an object is moving up, we'll say, then it's going to have a positive velocity. And so that positive actually tells me the direction it's moving in. Or if it's not sitting on something and gravity pulls it down, then it's going to move in the negative direction. Or in the problems today, Usain Bolt, I'm going to assume, is starting at the origin, and then he's running in the positive direction. But if the wind came up, a real big wind, and blew him in the opposite direction, then he'd be moving in the negative. And so I'm not cheating. I'm actually including positive and negatives to... Uh, to explain that. Also, that you should understand the difference between an average and an instantaneous velocity. Um, an average velocity is looking at a certain period of time and saying how fast did it move during that period of time. But along that race of Usain Bolt, he has all these different instantaneous velocities that are a little bit different. And the best way to explain that is maybe with some videos that I just shot. So let me bring up one of these. Uh, this is a video of me. Let's see, go back to the beginning. So this is me taking a weight and then just dropping the weight, like that. So what I can do, let me go back for just a second. If I go right here, and I think I should be able to draw on this. So what I can do is I can actually mark where that weight is. Oh, so let's go back a second. So right here, the bottom of the weight, we'll say, is right there. And now it drops a frame, and the bottom of the weight is right there. And it drops a frame, and the bottom of the weight is right there. And now it's right there. And now it's way down here. And so what we can look at is that this is an object that is changing in velocity. And so its velocity way up here was actually zero. And then its velocity changed, and it got faster and faster in the negative direction over time. Uh, and so that would be an instantaneous velocity wherever it is. But I could also take this whole thing and figure out what's the average velocity over that. And so make sure you kind of understand the difference between uh, the two. Let's try another one of these. Um, here's another one video I just made. So this is just an object that's rolling across the table. 
So let's get that back again. So I'm going to give it an initial push like that. So I give it an initial push and then according to Newton's laws an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And so I'm going to mark the middle of the object right here. It's going a little slower and so let's go a couple one, two, three frames and now it's right here. One, two, three frames and now it's right here. One, two, three. Okay. And so I gave that an initial velocity and if you look at it, it seems to be uniform. And so in this case, we'd actually have an instantaneous velocity at any one point uh, that's actually equal to this average velocity over the whole distance. And when we get to doing some, um, some graphing, that, that'll make a little bit more sense. Um, but remember there's a difference between the two and so I kind of will uh, use them interchangeably but make sure you understand which are the ones I'm, I'm talking about. Okay so definition time. If you need to solve some problems this is the definition for velocity. So definition of velocity it's simply change in x over the change in t where x is its position and t is equal to the time. And so to solve a problem that you might have like on a worksheet or a test, um, let's do Usain Bolt. So his world record in the 100 point meter dash is 9.58 seconds. And so to figure out his velocity, this is how it works in my brain, I go delta x over delta t. So delta x is simply the change in x over the change in t. And so how far does his distance change? Well it's going to be 100 point meters. Always make sure you're including the correct number of significant digits and the units as well otherwise you're going to get stupid answers. Now we look at the change in time. Well the change in time is 9.58 seconds. Okay so how do we do this? We're going to divide 100 point meters divided by 9.58 seconds. I did that just a second ago and I got 10.4 and the, and the units then are going to be in meters per second. And so the average velocity of Usain Bolt during his whole run is 10.4 meters per second. Using that brain trick again, if I take that times 2.2, he's going roughly uh, 23 miles per hour to give you an idea of what his average speed is. And so that'd be a pretty simple velocity kind of problem. Um, sometimes it doesn't start from rest. In other words, it doesn't start from a time being zero and uh, a velocity being zero as well. And so a better way to remember what velocity is instead of the change in x over the change in t is it's the final x or its final position minus its initial. And so get used to this in science. The f always stands for final and the i always stands for initial divided by the final time minus the initial time. And so this is a better way to explain what velocity is. And let's try a problem where it, where it actually varies a little bit. These are the splits from the um, Usain Bolt's race. Uh, this is actually in the Olympic record where he ran 9.69. Uh, and so the first thing let's do is let's try to figure out the velocity for the first meters, first 10 meters. And so velocity, remember, is going to be xf minus xi, where xf is the final position, and then it's going to be tf minus ti. Okay. And when you, when you ever solve problems, you want to make sure you identify what do I know. Well, what's the final position? That's going to be 10.0. So 10.0. What was his initial position? And again, I should put meters. What was his initial position? That was 0. So that's minus 0. What was his final time? That'd be 1.85. 1.85. And then what was the initial in seconds? It's 0 seconds. So what I get here is, well, roughly 10.0 uh, meters over 1.85 seconds. And so when I worked this e e earlier, and I get 5.41. So it'd be 5.41 meters per second. Now why does this have three significant digits? Because that has three, and that has three as well. Um, so how fast is that in miles per hour? It's not very fast. I don't know, like, uh, what, 13, 14 miles an hour? 
Um, let's look how fast he's running later in the race, though. And let's, so let's try it way down here. So if we go way down here, let's say at this point. So remember, uh, velocity is going to be final x minus initial x over time final minus time initial. And this is why you'll start to see why it's important that we that we kind of keep track of that. So what you, during this next 10 meters, he ends up at 70.0 meters. Uh, and he started at 60.0 meters. So this would be the initial distance. The final time is 7.14 seconds. And the initial time is 6.32 seconds. So what does that equal? Well, that equals 10.0 meters divided by uh, 0.82 seconds. And so the right answer should be 12.2 meters per second. So that'd be the right answer with three significant digits. Um, doing that uh, into miles per hour, it's around 27 miles an hour. So it's a, a ridiculous amount of speed. And so this would be his speed down here, 12.2 meters per second. And remember when we were way up here, his speed was only 5.4 uh, meters per second. And so what has happened from here to here? Well, the velocity has actually increased. And so you know what that means. What does it mean when your velocity is increasing? That means that we're accelerating. And so not only is the velocity important, but what happens to the velocity over time is also important. And so that's what acceleration is. Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And if you look, the equation is very similar. We take the final velocity minus the initial, and then divide that by the final time divided by the initial time. Now the units are a little bit weird if you think about it. We're taking meters per second, which is what the velocity is measured in, and we're dividing it by a second. And so we, lots of times we'll just write that as meters per second squared. Now what's one acceleration that you should learn? This is the acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What does that mean? If we take a person like this standing at the top of a cliff, and they fall off. Um, at, the, at zero seconds, they're going to be going 9.8 meters per second. Excuse me. <laughs> at the top, they're going to be going zero meters per second. Uh, but after one second, they're going to be going 9.8 meters per second. So if you jump off a cliff, after one second, you're roughly going 23 miles an hour. After two seconds, you're going 46 miles an hour. After three seconds, you're going, you know, 68, whatever, miles per hour. And so you're going to go really, really fast, very quickly. And so that's acceleration due to gravity. Why it's in the negative is that, remember, on our coordinate system, this would be in the positive, And so this is going to be in the negative as we go down. Let's try an actual problem uh, to, to, to how you would have to solve a problem like this. This is the Bugatti Veyron, which is made by Volkswagen. And it's the fastest production car. Um, that you could buy, which if, if you had a bunch of money, goes like 250 miles an hour. And so let's try to do an acceleration program, uh, problem. So acceleration, remember, is the change in velocity over the change in time. So let's figure out if it can go from 0 to 60 in 2.46 seconds, what kind of an acceleration are we talking about? So again, that's going to be VF minus VI over TF minus TI. So what's our final velocity? Our final velocity is going to be 60 miles an hour, which we couldn't use in an equation. We have to convert that to meters per second. So that'd be 26.9 meters per second minus zero, because it starts at a standstill. What is its final time? Its final time is going to be 2.46 seconds minus zero seconds, because it goes from a standstill. And so now we can figure out the acceleration. So 26.9 divided by 2.46 is going to be 10.9 meters per second squared. So that'd be the right answer. So going back again, figuring out what the acceleration due to gravity is. If you're falling off a cliff, you're going to experience an acceleration in the negative or down of 9.8 meters per second. If you're sitting in this car, <laughs> you're actually going to feel uh, more acceleration than you would falling off a cliff as you accelerate. And so I don't know what that's like, uh, but I bet it feels really, really cool. Okay, in this video, I'm going to introduce relative velocity. 
uh, as a, a topic in the Applied Mathematics course. This is the very first time we would have seen relative velocity. However, it is not the first time we would have seen the fundamental tool in relative velocity, which is vectors. And relative velocity is analyzed solely by using vectors. And well, of course, what's usually involved with, with vectors, we have a bit of trigonometry, uh, a bit of algebra, and um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So the thing about this is, I was, I was talking to somebody recently and I said that I was going to begin the, the relative velocity section and I said, oh, that's the hardest, that's the hardest chapter in, in the book. And the book has, or on, well, say on the Leaving Certificate course when he was talking about in the book. Uh, but the thing is, the truth of the matter is that there are much harder questions. There are, there are topics like, um, like differential equations or... I don't know what, it will say hydrostatics, whatever, like, I, I, actually hydrostatics isn't too bad, but anyway. You know, we have, we have different, other different topics, which to be honest, probably in my opinion, are more difficult. The dif difference, however, is that with relative velocity, people find it difficult to get the whole notion in their head. They, they, they're not able to look at it in the right way, and because they're not able to look at it in the right way, well, they're not able to do it. And what I mean by that is, well, if you're dealing with projectiles, so, in my black bar, if you're dealing with a projectile, well, first of all, you will have seen your x-axis and your y-axis before. Now, of course, we do use these in, in relative velocity. But, you're also dealing with, let's say, the motion of a projectile. And you can relate to that. You can say, well, that's like, um, that is like hitting a ball with a, or a slitter, excuse me, with a hurley. Or, you know, hitting a ball with my foot. It's it's something you can relate to and you can you kind of... Well, if you eat the, the conditions, for example, for maximum range was that the height above the x-axis, s sub y, was equal to zero. And that made sense because the particle was back on the ground. However, for some reason, relative velocity, although yes, it, you can definitely relate to it in a similar fashion, people find it difficult to relate to it. So I'll show you an example of what relative velocity might mean. If you have car A moving this direction and moving it at 20 i hat, like so, and you have car B moving in this direction, uh, we'll say now this direction in 60 i hat. Alright, now I'm going to tell you the following. We want to find out how fast is the car B moving relative to A, or how much faster is B moving to A. So if you can imagine the following. Imagine that you are on a motorway, and the motorway will have two, at least two lanes on it. So I'm going to draw it this way because we, we in, in, in my country, Ireland, we drive on the left-hand side. All right, so this is, we'll say we're moving 20, and we happen to use this, this unit vector here, so 20j. That's the speed you're moving at, or the velocity you're moving at. And the car passes you out going at 60j hat. Now, the question is, how fast does the car be move as you look at it? How fast do you feel it's moving? Do you feel that it's moving at 60 we'll say meters per second, the answer is you don't. Do you feel it's moving at 20? The answer is you don't. What you'll actually feel is that it's moving at 40. Because you are moving as well in the same direction. So the speed it was going is, we'll say, relative to you slowed down. So that, was, that would make sense. Obviously, if you suddenly were going at 0 meters per second and this car was going at 60, well, then you definitely see it's moving at 60. However, if you're moving at 20 meters per second, it will be, seem to move slower. It will seem to move slower, and if you move 50, it will seem to move even slower. And if at some stage you move at the same speed as it, it will seem not to move at all. So if, think about this now: you look out the right-hand side of your car window, and you see another car beside you moving at the same speed as you. Well, then it seems if you weren't aware of, let's we'll say the the the, the terrain rushing past you, then it wouldn't seem to move. So its speed or its velocity relative to you would be zero. Conversely, or in the, in the other way, if, for example, I was moving in the opposite direction. Now, obviously, if I'm moving at zero, well, that, that doesn't have a direction, so it's just 60. What if I was moving at 10? So, if I was moving in the same direction as car B, then I'm slowing down, in, in, it, it, it slows down relative to me, but if I'm moving in the opposite direction, well, surely this time it's moving faster relative to you, and it might move 70 j hat. 
And that, that kind of makes sense. If you're moving the opposite direction to something, then it seems to be moving faster. And the reason is, <coughs> excuse me, and the reason is as follows, that a man, now it, it's, not, it's not good always to, to, to talk about certain names because people seem to be afraid of these people, but if I mention the name Einstein, Einstein did a paper on relativity. All right now, I'm not saying that we're going anywhere near relativity, but it, it's it's a similar similar concept, right? So in relativity, he said that everybody can consider themselves to be stationary, and as a result, everything else is moving. WRT means with respect to you. So even though you're moving, say if you're moving at 10 meters per second, you, it, it is mathematically equivalent to say that you're stationary and everything else is moving at 10 meters per second relative to you. Alright? So all that matters is the relative motion. It doesn't really matter what's actually happening. So when I say the car A is moving at 70 meters per second relative, or car B is moving at 70 meters per second relative to car A, it does not mean that car B is moving at 70 kilometers a second. It means that in reference or in uh, in relation to the car A, it seems it's doing like that. It seems it's doing that. All right, so it's just we're, we're, we're relating things. And like I said, the, these two frames of reference, you can say the frame of reference within which you are moving is equivalent mathematically to the frame of reference within which you are stationary. So you can always say either you're stationary and everything else is moving, or you are moving and everything else is stationary. You're allowed to do that. It, because it, if you do the maths, it turns out to be the exact same thing. So how does this work out, to, work out for us? Well, I'm going to define the following. I'm going to define, if I have two vectors, two velocity vectors, the velocity vector A and the velocity vector B. If I want to find out, all right, if I want to find out the velocity of A relative to B, so I write the, the, this, write it like that, then VAB is equal to VA minus VB. Alright, so how does this relate to what we were saying? So, we're saying that, for example, um, okay, well, first thing, the important things here is, first of all, this is actual velocity. Right, that's actually what they are physically doing, and so is this, actual velocity. However, this is not actual. This is relative. So this is like what I was saying with the 70 kilometers or meters per second. It seems that it's moving 70 kilometers a second relative to the other car. But its actual velocity would have been 60, we'll say. All right? So how do we work out uh, which is which? What is A and what is B? Well, let's just see if we can analyze this first of all to find out for ourselves. All right, let's see if we can analyze this. If I said the car A was moving this way, that's car A moving at, we'll say, 20. And this is car B. Now, I know the vector should be longer, but it doesn't matter. We'll say this is going at 60. Now, I said, relative to the car A, the car B seems that it's going like 40 meters per second, of course, because it's slowed down. It, it seems to be slowed down by the same speed as A. So we should get VAB being, or one of, we'll say, take this out here, 40 meters per second. See, the only way we can get 40 is by having 60 minus 20. All right? So 60 was B, 20 was A, so this was actually VB, VB, A. All right? So the velocity of B with respect to A, which is exactly what we're thinking. The velocity of B relative to A. So A is the one that we said was, that can be said to be stationary. That is the stationary frame of reference. V, B, A. V, the velocity of B with respect to A. So how much quicker it's moving than A, or what is it, if A was stationary, what would B look like it was doing? All right? So, like I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the frame of reference is that A is, is actually moving at 20 meters per second. But I'm saying A can also think that he is stationary. He is 
inverted commas stationary. He's not actually stationary, but it, it is mathematically equivalent to say that he is at rest. So if he is at rest, if he is at rest, then B looks like it's moving 40 kilometers past it. All right? So that's what I mean by uh, with respect to or relative to. So what is VAB in this case? VAB. So that's equal to VA minus BB. Now these are vectors so that we have direction. So VAB is equal to 20, I will say 20, that was, what was a J hat, wasn't it? J hat minus 60 J hat. So VAB is equal to negative 40 J hat. Now, what does that mean? So let's just write in the initially at the first first uh, result we had we V B A was equal to plus forty and we, I suppose we use the unit vectors j hat. So let's think about this. Of course we're defining plus j is in this direction, plus j like that. Alright? So V V A B means the velocity of A relative to the to, to the car B. The B1 is seemed to be stationary. It can believe it's stationary. Now it doesn't it isn't in fact stationary, but it believes it is. And look, it's going it means the car A is going at negative 40 meters per second in if, if B thinks it's stationary, which is, is right, because of course the speed is right, and look the direction is this way. Alright? Why is that? Because if you think about it, if you are in car B, and if you th if you're driving past somebody on the motorway, and you pass a car. Now, if you thought that you, if you said to yourself you were stationary, then it looks like car A, the one on your left hand side, is actually going in the opposite direction. And that's why you have the negative sign here. Whereas the other way around, if we had VBA, the velocity of B relative to A, A in this case is the one who can believe he is stationary. Like so. And he, he believes that car B is moving at 40 km or 40 meters per second in the positive j which is exactly right which is what you would see if i was being overtaken by a car moving faster than me and i thought i was stationary it would look that the car is moving in the plus j direction by uh, its its relative speed or its relative velocity all right so that's the fundamental thing you need to get your head around that you have to work out remember vba a or the second one of these is the one that believes it's stationary. And of course these can be any letters you want. You could have VCD, VEF, whatever. Okay? So VEF would mean the velocity of E relative to F, where F believes it's stationary. And this is the velocity of C relative to D, where D believes it's stationary. And finally, just to write it explicitly, this means VC minus VD. VE minus VF. Alright? So, uh, that's, that's, I suppose, a, a reasonable introduction to, to relative velocity. Thank you very much for watching. Pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and do um, an example with relative velocity. This is a pretty classic problem. It's all over the place, so I'm just going to make up my own small variation of it. We're doing real physics, so I gotta take off my jacket. It's not like Mr. Rogers, you know, he always takes off his jacket. Or he puts on a sweater. I don't I don't remember. Okay, so here is the situation. Let's say I have a river. And let's say um, it's ten meters wide. I'm completely just making up stuff here. Um, and the water's flowing. So let's say the uh, the magnitude of the velocity of water with respect to the ground is one meter per second. Okay. And so here I'm using the notation of the water with respect to the ground. Okay. So if you're standing right here and you're looking at the water, it's going one meter per second that way. Now you have a boat. That's my boat. And the velocity of the boat with respect to the water has a maximum velocity of, let's say, three meters per second. Okay? And so the question is, um, what, how would I have to aim at what angle 
so that I would travel straight across the river? That's the question. Okay. So I have my um, magnitude to the velocity of the boat with respect to the water and the magnitude to the water with respect to the ground. Now, what do I want? Uh, let's say if I, if I look at this boat from the ground, I want to see it going straight across. You know, do that, it'll be like this, aimed this way and going straight across. Okay, that's what I want. So, if I want to see what's the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground, okay, and so I know that that's going to be the velocity of the boat with respect to the water as a vector, plus the velocity of the Okay, so if I add those two things, the, the trick to remember is if these subscripts are in the middle, then I get, I get the ones on the outside. And, I, and I, I show you how to do that in the, in the book. Okay, so what do I know about the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground? Let me call this x, y axis. Then I know that, let me say, velocity of the boat with respect to the ground in the x direction is going to be 0 meters per second. I want that to be true. So that's going to be the velocity of the boat with respect to the water in the x direction plus the velocity of the water with respect to the ground in the x direction, which is zero, right? Because it's, oh no, I'm sorry, not zero. Okay, so if that's my x direction, then I have zero equals velocity of the boat with respect to the water in the x direction plus one meter per second. And if I, let me redraw my boat here. Here's my boat vector. This is the velocity of the boat with respect to the water theta. And so this is going to be the um, velocity of the boat with respect to the water in the x direction right there, that component right there. So I can write this as um, 0 equals VB water, the magnitude, the whole thing, negative, because it's in the negative direction. Now I have the opposite side of that triangle, so I need to have, say the sine of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that means I mean opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse times the sine of theta would be BW, the velocity of the boat with respect to the water in the x direction. So that's it right there. And then I have this plus one. So right there, now I can go ahead and solve for theta. Okay, so I can say VBW sine theta equals one meter per second, sine theta equals one meter per second. The magnitude of the velocity of the boat with respect to the water is three meters per second. And the units cancel. You, you can't have the sign of something, have something with units. So theta is going to be the inverse sine of one third. And let me see. So 19.5 degrees. So that's that angle right there. So you have to aim 19.5 degrees uh, to the left in order to go straight across. Now another common extended part to this is, well, how long does it take you to get across? Um, okay, so now if I just, if I look at the uh, velocity of the boat with respect to the ground in the y direction, um, then I can, I know the distance in the y direction, I can find it. I can do this. The velocity of the boat with respect to the ground in the y direction equals delta y ground over delta t. So I can, I know delta y ground is 10 meters, so I can find delta t. What's the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground in the, in the y direction? Well, I, it's the same part of this. VBGY equals VBWY 
plus v water ground y. That's zero, so these are the same thing. So the, if I look back over here, the y direction, vby, vb ground y, is going to be this, the cosine of that angle times the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 3 meters per second times cosine of 19.5 degrees. Okay, let me erase this. So now I can solve for delta t. It's going to be 10 meters, my change in y with respect to the ground, divided by the y component, 3 meters per second, cosine 19.5 degrees. And if I put that in, I get, so 10 divided by 3.53 seconds. Okay, does that make sense? Um, we can, well, the units work, right? Meters cancel, and one divided by one over seconds does give me seconds. And it does make sense. Because what if there was no, what if there was a pond? If there was a pond, you just aim straight across because the velocity of the boat with respect to the, the velocity of the water with respect to the ground would be zero, so these two would be uh, the same. So now if I'm just going three meters per second across a 10 meter pond, it would take me three seconds. Ten, no wait, ah, if, if that's three and that's 10, then it'd be 10 divided by three, so 3.33. Now I'm aiming a little to the left, so I'm, I'm not going straight across. It's going to take me longer. Okay, It's going to take me longer, so that is longer than going straight across in still water. So that's good. Um, I, I, another question that you could ask that I'm not going to ask, but you could do this. How far is this path like that? And, and, how, long, and how far downstream does the person travel? If they aimed, oh, actually, no, that's a different question. The question is, what if they aim straight across? Would they get across faster or not? And how far downstream this way would they go? Yeah. So I'll leave that one for you. Okay.